Hello, assalamu alaikum, good evening, welcome to another episode of The Classics Show. I am your host, Chapnam Riaz. Today's program is, you know, we're going to talk about, we're going to discuss the relationship between literature and ethics, literature and morality. So it should be a very interesting episode today. And for today's episode, we're very happy to have with us in the studio our guest, uh, Dr. Omaima Gamran, who is a PhD in English. Thank you for being with us here today. Same here. Thank you so much. Right. We're really looking forward to, you know, talking about this topic, the um, relationship between literature and um, ethics, literature and morality. When, before we, you know, go on any further, what exactly is morality and why should we be concerned with it? And a moral code or a set of uh, moral rules for one person, are they going to be the same for other, can can we have a bit of a discussion on yeah. that? I think this is an interesting question. Uh, morality is basically uh, based on the uh, a set of ethics and a code of conduct of a person, human being, society, and then you know culture, mm -hmm. and that very much, according to me, is based on religious perspectives mm -hmm. because uh, in every society there is one prevailing uh, religion, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, which is being you know practiced by the uh, by, by the society of that country or you can say that culture, and that uh, those religious values uh, helps human being. Mm -hmm to um, to practice the morality to pr to practice that uh, code of conduct mm -hmm. uh, if you see in pakistan i mean that is supposed to be practiced mm -hmm. so in pakistan as it's more uh, uh, dominating religion is mm -hmm. islam mm -hmm. so people uh, usually teach morality and ethics mm -hmm. uh, according to the moral values of islam mm -hmm. Uh, but having said that, uh, the, just uh, you know, uh, the uh, when we to say so, it, it it doesn't mean that if there is a different religion in different society, then altogether the moral set of values or the uh, the code of conduct will be different. No, mm. they're pretty I much think, the same. Yes, mm. because uh, if we talk about moral values, because mm. uh, religion is based on moral values, uh, practice of moral values, code of conduct. And then uh, uh, you know the, the virtues, the uh, you can say the prayers and mm. your um, uh, your religious practices. Mm. So every religion varies uh, mostly in their religious practices, right. but uh, in terms of uh, moral values, they don't vary a lot. Mm. So they are eighty percent almost same. Like every religion uh, preaches about speaking the truth, mm. humanity, mm. charity, mm. and you know taking care of others. So mm. that is something which is uh, very important that uh, most of the moral values remain same mm. and we need to practice being humans we need to practice those moral values and ethical codes right in exactly and um, so when we talk about you know literature and we're talking about the relationship of literature mm. with morality how does literature uh, influence uh, moral philosophy uh, philosophy of uh, uh, moral values yes Okay, I think uh, I would say, uh, I would uh, uh, start with a quote, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Right, John Keats. And usually this beauty is considered to be or interpreted as beauty of physical beauty mm. or maybe beauty of a nature. Mm. But for me or for my interpretation of the literature, this beauty is beauty from inside. Absolutely. This is the beauty of the heart. Mm. This is the beauty of the soul. Mm. This is the beauty of being helpful for others. Mm. This is the beauty of being caring. This is the beauty of feeling the pain of others. Mm. And this is the beauty of your conduct, your character, your behavior, your attitude. Mm. Even the beauty of the way you speak, talk with others, mm. you feel the pain of others. So. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, literature, of course, there are ma uh, many pieces of literature which mm. uh, promote moral and ethical values. Mm. And uh, accordingly, uh, we, uh, this, uh, and it depends that the way, uh, how we interpret literature. Right, okay. In what terms we interpret it. Mm -hmm. So having said that, literature shapes the mind of the reader. Mm -hmm. So um, one would say that uh, being, you know, uh, being subjected to different types of literature, you would want quality literature to come your way. Let's talk about that a bit. Yeah, 
I think it's very important. Again, as I said, uh, one aspect of literature is the way you interpret it. Mm. Another aspect about literature is the selection of literature. Mm. I mean, uh, whatever is written in a form of rhythm cannot be a poetry. Mm. Whatever is written as a novel mm. is not a good piece of literature for me. It, is, it depends that what, what is the quality of literature, right. which, is, uh, which should be the uh, criteria for the selection of uh, uh, literature. Mm. For example, um, if I say um, uh, Freudian theory, mm. uh, which is, uh, which is uh, quite in, uh, in literature, which is being influenced a lot because Freudian is a, uh, has a name in psychology mm. and he interprets many theories, he gives many theories about the human psyche. Mm. And many people of uh, literature, uh, they, in their piece of work, they, with the help of that theory, they uh, develop their characters mm. and with those characters they uh, provide, you know, different uh, um, nature of, uh, d uh, different nature of human beings and their different psychological problems and their different uh, uh, personality clashes mm. on the basis of those Freudian theories. So mm. even literature is also being held by another source of literature, which is Freudian theory. Mm. And in that, um, if we talk about today our society, mm. here everyone is in rush to be successful as getting better jobs mm. or may maybe earning more money. I'm sorry to say that. Mm. And, the, and everyone is more care, uh, caring about the uh, child's or you can say human being's IQ level, which mm. is, you know, in, uh, called intelligent caution. Mm. But I think the role of literature is that it does not only, you know, give aesthetic sense mm. or beauty of uh, nature or all that, but it also promotes the idea of EQ. Mm. And what is EQ? EQ is emotional quotient, mm. which means that a human being as a balanced personality in terms mm. of emotions of human being, mm. that how if a human being is uh, facing a problem and how uh, emotionally the person remains balanced. Mm. If you're, you're angry, mm. what should be your reaction? There should be some difference between animal and human being. We mm. have to think uh, before we react. So uh, emotional balance EQ is the idea again which is promoted in literature and I think this is a big role of literature that it promotes uh, uh, the morality in terms of balanced human being, uh, in terms of their emotions, mm. they promote tolerance, they promote uh, courage mm. uh, and uh, uh, I think here I would like to say one verse which is in Urdu mm -hmm. and it is Idhar Ao Zalim Hunar Azmai that is, come on you tyrant, let's test our skills. Mm. You check your bows and arrows and I give trial for my liver. And here liver is metaphorically used for courage and tolerance. Mm. So, you know, people, uh, so this is how uh, literature promotes that we have to be courageous, we have to be tolerant, mm. we have to balance our emotions, we should not react more absurdly, more mm. uh, spontaneously without taking care of uh, moral values and ethics. Absolutely. That's a very interesting point that you've brought up. Uh, because, you know, when you look around you, mm. especially when you observe, mm. the, the more silent uh, a person is, the more you're able to observe things going around. Mm. So if you walk around for, for some time being silent and just not saying anything and just looking at people around you, exactly what you're talking about. Hmm. It seems that people around us have become more reactionary. Yes. You may be in, in the market, you may be in a shopping mall, you may be in an office, right. uh, or even somebody's home. And all of a sudden you see that a certain conversation takes a direction hmm. where what you would not think would be a bone of contention, mm. all of a sudden flares up yeah. into a huge debate and even mm, unpleasant sort of uh, situations as well. So, you know, what you're saying, the emotional quotient needs to be worked on and to not be a reactionary yes. uh, figure as, as you know, uh, is happening in our society. So mm. how can we, you know, uh, make, maintain this balance? You also made a very important point of quality, hmm. quality as opposed to quantity. Yes. So how do we get that all back into the system and we bring people back to these values? Yeah, very true. I think nowadays uh, no issues have become issues. Uh, people uh, are so intolerant that they are not even bear the differences of opinion. 
which Absolutely. is actually the right of every human being. I may not, you know, really totally agree with you. Another person may not agree with mm. me. So mm. everyone has right for the opinion. Mm. And being patient means that we should uh, listen to others mm. and we should react very patiently because that's and we should re respect and we should value the mm. opinion of other person, which can be different exactly. from my opinion. And isn't that the basis of education? Education of having an educated mind. Right. There's no. Um, I mean, what good does it do to a person who has m many degrees right. but is not able to entertain yes. the thought yes. of another person without offending them? Yes, I think the big reason behind this uh, in our society is that we are we are going away from literature. Mm. Literature, we are going away from quality literature. Quality literature. That's I mean, true. there are poems, there mm. are, you know, certain novels being selected mm. Uh, mm. by uh, our, in, even in our educational system. Mm. But we are not maybe reading or promoting the um, quality uh, literature to, the, to our students, to our uh, young generation. Mm. Uh, social media, there are many positive effects of social media. I mm. don't say it's all mm. negative, but maybe this is one of the backdrop of uh, social media media that people are now away from reading habits yes they are not reading quality mm. uh, good quality books they are spending more time mm. on watching maybe TV or mm. Uh, they are more busy on other social medias mm. and and that is uh, putting them away from literature and mm. the, the the one more um, very important source of uh, inculcating uh, morality and ethics in the society is being ignored nowadays mm. and people are less interested in such programs in mm. such you can say um, uh, sources like books mm. or dramas and even novels and mm. uh, uh, many other literary programs such as this very much show mm. which are giving this kind of uh, uh, you know idea about these kind of social issues related to ethics and morality so there's a need to uh, you know put our new generation and youth towards the uh, to realize, make them realize the importance, the importance of literature absolutely. and importance of reading good literature. Reading good literature, absolutely. Okay, so, you know, for the viewers who are watching this program uh, and are finding it hard to understand, uh, if we could explain to them, you know, what, what does quality literature actually do for you? Because many people would think, you know, okay, if I pick up a good book and read it, what, what am I going to gain for that? Mm. Uh, people who are not avid readers. Mm. So, Tell them a bit, you know, about what quality literature actually does to you, how it opens up your mind and what it's, it's just like uh, a plant needs water and sun to, for nourishment. Mm. So, so uh, I mean, obviously, first thing is uh, uh, if we talk about the, uh, the, the, you can say, physical checks, then mm. we, we can look at the publishers, uh, like who is publishing that mm. literature. Mm. But even uh, more than that is that uh, the way uh, the writer or the uh, literary person who ha whoever has written literature, how we are interpreting that literature, piece of literature, how mm. the narrative or the ideology being promoted mm. by the author is actually being understood and perceived by the mm. uh, readers. Mm. Because, uh, and there are certain hurdles in this uh, uh, issue. Mm. One hurdle is that especially if we are reading English literature, Mm. One very important hurdle is uh, the difference of culture and societal vi values Absolutely. and obviously difference of literature, uh, yeah. difference of uh, religion, sorry, yeah. because uh, their religion, their mm. societal values, their culture is altogether different from our culture. Mm. And uh, but it doesn't mean that every uh, English literature is not uh, of uh, any use for Pakistani readers. No, mm. we have to select, you know, certain uh, properly as a, for example, as a teacher or as mm. a parent, we can guide our students what a piece of literature can be useful for them uh, to enhance their uh, personality and to, uh, to improve their, you know, uh, code of conduct and to give them, uh, make them better human beings. Mm. So, and then uh, a big, uh, you can say, responsibility lies on uh, people from our own society who are writing literature in English or in Urdu or in any other language. Mm. And uh, th that is that they should uh, tackle with the, with the critical issues of the society. Mm. They should write on certain um, issues which are 
problematic in our society which is which, is, which are causing the deterioration of this society as typically Pakistani society. So, I think they should focus on such ideologies and such matters and they should write on it. There is a need of a day that they should choose sensible topics and write for our uh, mm. society to, uh, to promote whatever is required to be promoted. That is absolutely true. I completely agree with you uh, that quality literature, especially something that addresses the issues that we are facing today, yeah, yeah. that our younger generation is facing, even not the young, younger generation, you know, mm. middle-aged, anyone, it, it yeah. should cater to all, uh, all parts of society and be something that is relatable. Yeah. Because as you said, you know, the great literature, the um, writers from around the world, mm. you can pick up so much from mm. their work and everything, but you have that cultural divide mm. where all of a sudden when you have a homegrown writer mm. writing something that mm. you identify with, right. then its impact is yeah. completely different, different because you'll be able to embrace the narrative, the right. style, the characters, the mm. surroundings. Right. As you said that this is really, you know, something that is very important. Mm. So how can we promote this? How can we get our authors to address these issues and, you know, change the, the flow mm. of, of story writing and storytelling mm. and come to those things that people have not written about? Uh, I think uh, our, uh, I mean, if we talk versus uh, the literary people who are writing in our society, they are mm. pretty much aware of this fact and they are writing. Mm. Uh, there are some many good pieces of uh, literature which I have read which are quite uh, from our own, you know, society and they are indigenized in a sense that they are giving the particular issues which are not alien to mm, us mm. because uh, maybe certain issues written by mm. English writers are alien for our society because we are not, on, um, our society is not facing those kind of issues. Mm. Uh, here I would like to quote for example uh, Dr. Shah Siddiqui, uh, I mean he is one of my favorite writers from Pakistani uh, literature. So, uh, recently he wrote uh, an article on, uh, on his mother mm. and he tried to tell the love uh, of the mother in terms of bringing up a child even when the mother is not very educated. Mm. And he tried to uh, explain how beautifully like an educated and responsible mother, mm. responsible mother, his mother try to nurture uh, mm. not only uh, the uh, you can say uh, cater by catering the physical needs of their uh, her children but mm. also by uh, trying to put uh, the values of education character building uh, by uh, you know by promoting every uh, uh, every aspect of uh, a good human being uh, by giving uh, bringing up a child with a with a with a good personality traits mm. and uh, even when the mother is not educated so mm. that was a beautiful article and i think uh, in today's um, society even our educated mother like us mm. need to read that that True. even being educated are we really mm. uh, nurturing the way uh, that uneducated mm. mother uh, mm. did mm. Um, uh, so responsibly mm. uh, for her children that's absolutely so, true. Yeah. But still, you know, there is always gap for mm. the. Um, uh, there is How do we encourage space. our young writers? Sorry. How do we encourage our young writers to come forward? Because what you see many times is that you have, you know, writers who are either writing poetry or prose, mm. but they're very sort of um, self-critical and shy, and um, they're scared of being rejected or criticism, mm. Mm. and you, they'll, sometimes they'll have beautiful work. Yeah. that they're not sharing. Yeah. So, you know, the importance of forums and yeah. literary groups, uh, tell us about that, how that yeah, can help. There is a need for the promotion of, uh, you know, young talent mm. in our country because uh, no doubt they are very creative. Mm. They're, they're, they can write uh, as good as Faz and as Ghalib or mm. as any other uh, English uh, um, poet. So uh, we need to, you're right, some of them are very um, shy, even mm. uh, they write, uh, they produce a good piece of writing. Even as a teacher, I can uh, share my experience that mm. some of my students, they show me their piece of writing as a short story or as a poem. And I then try to encourage them that you should uh, give, uh, you know, publish this. Maybe if you do, you have not completed a book or mm. you, you should not wait for completing a book, mm. you can even publish it in a newspaper. And if 
and then of course uh, with the Start with the passage the of time steps, yes yeah. where by getting their uh, feedback from mm. the audience mm. uh, and you will get encouragement and i'm sure this is beautiful piece of uh, um, art and then you will be uh, mm. you will be you know growing as a uh, as a mature literary person mm. and so again this is a duty of teacher this is mm. duty of uh, parents that mm. they should try to uh, try to you know uh, uh, we can say uh, nurture a child no uh, they know. should uh, you know they should try to look into the these uh, hidden talents. Uh, talents of our children as a right. student or as a uh, as a child and then we should promote them mm. in that way right now that's very interesting you know the parent teacher child that triangle how much of a connect or disconnect mm. are we witnessing uh, today in in today's world because you know, things are going at a very fast pace. Right. So time is of the essence and many things will be overlooked mm. because we, we're multitasking and there's so much that's going on at the moment. Again, the quality versus quantity. We're putting our children in more expensive schools. Mm. We're putting so much of our budget mm. towards their education. But are we really educating them where they need to be? Yeah. So this is, I think, same thing that I said that only IQ is not important. Mm. So a balanced emo uh, e EQ is also important. And as a parent and as a teacher, this is our fundamental duty that we should equally take these both things together, that mm. they should not be just degree holders. They yeah. should be a real educated people mm. who should behave like educated people mm. and who should be good personalities, not only in terms of uh, uh, how much money they are earning. Absolutely. Like if you're uh, even at the executive position of the um, uh, uh, company and you, are, you don't know how to tolerate a small mistakes of your colleagues, you don't know how to behave with your, uh, maybe with your sibling or with mm. your parents or with your friends and society, with the other members of society. Mm. So sorry to say for me, this person is not successful, even this is, if this person is earning uh, millions of rupees because it means that it's only the uh, materialistic, we are just creating materialistic uh, personalities, not the personalities who are useful for this society to spread love, to spread humanity, to spread care. So and in fact, you know, what you're saying is actually because leadership, mm. leadership is very, very important, the role of mentors in society as well. Yeah. So if, you know, there's a leader that, of course, it's an uh, instinct that a person would want to look up to that person. If a leader is not in, uh, you know, inspiring the people that are working under him or her mm. and is not giving a positive influence, right. then the people working for them are also going to think that, you know, a very important thing you mentioned, the character, the personality. Yes. Uh, is that something, because when a person like that comes into an authoritative figure, they're damaging the self-esteem right. of the people who are working for them. Yeah. And that's also very important, is it not? The self-esteem of a single individual Right. So this is what I say that you should not be educated only by being holding good uh, high degrees. You mm. should be educated in your behavior, yeah. in your conduct, in mm. your. And again, there is a, a big role of parents, you know, um, teachers, and then uh, literature. Mm. Through literature, we can also teach these uh, moral values, and we can uh, we can produce better human beings in our society. Absolutely. Um, now, while we're talking about children. Hmm. and uh, the role that parents and teachers can have together uh, to make sure that they are, um, you know, getting the best experience of childhood and, and forming of the, those, those years as well, personality-wise. Hmm. Because we have a curriculum that has so much studying and so many books hmm. for a child, for a young age, a very young child who's taking a heavy bag to school, hmm. lots of books in it. So where are they getting the time for enjoyable reading yeah so i mean there are certain schools where they're giving uh, their classes for libraries mm. where students go and they sit in the library they read books mm. even um, in in my university i also always uh, you know ask students that in your free classes time do not spend whole time in cafeteria mm. okay social life is also important but mm. do spend some quality time in your in the libraries go and search for good books yeah. spend time on reading and mm. try to because these all are the sources your society 
and your books. Mm -hmm. They are books are considered to be best friends. So they, uh, you should spend some time on reading books and getting, uh, you know, something useful out of it, and mm -hmm. that can influence your mind and your personality. So that's, that's very important. Such kind of practice is really needed, mm -hmm. and there should be, you know, special time, uh, uh, time slot as a even as a. There should be. I think there should be in every level class, like at school, college, and university level, there should be one course of ethics. To oh, be, that's to be, absolutely To be taught true. where we will, where yeah. they can even add some literary part. That that's how so literature true. is promoting ethics. There, where there should be some religious part, mm. where how religion is uh, promoting. Of course, religion is all about morality and yeah. ethics and code of conduct, and that can help our young generation to that's very uh, true. build yeah. their personalities, which are more representative in this society, which that's are more true. beautiful, which mm. are based on love Relatable. and Relatable. They can understand and adhere to. Okay, so I'm going to um, have to take a break right now, uh, but we'll be back. Don't change the channel. Welcome back to the program. We're having a fantastic discussion uh, talking about the relationship between literature, ethics, morality as well. Okay, um, now I wanted to ask you the importance of storytelling and myths, folklore, hmm. all of this. This also, uh, you know, plays in a very, very important role in sculpting the sort of um, you know, perception we have of right and wrong and morals yes. and values. Yeah, very true. And here I would uh, give an example of, of my own life as my father is professor of Arabic and he is poet also. Mm -hmm. So uh, in my childhood, I remember every night before I sleep, my father used to tell me one short, uh, small story. Mm -hmm. And he used to tell me story mostly based on uh, morality and ethical values. Mm. And very interesting stories, sometimes from um, stories of a uh, holy prophet, peace be upon him, or callous, uh, sahaba karam, sometimes otherwise moral stories of. Mm. So I remember that uh, the story of uh, uh, Abdul Qadir Jilani, mm. uh, the story of truth of uh, Abdul Qadir Jilani, which actually motivated uh, thieves mm. uh, to change their plan and they return the all the uh, looted, uh, you can say, treasure of the people. Mm. That um, uh, mo motivated me or inspired me so much that after that, I, as a child, I decided that I would never uh, tell a lie. Mm. I would, you know, uh, I should always speak truth. Mm. I should be tru uh, truthful. And similarly, many other such stories. So th there is a very, you can say, this uh, storytelling can uh, play a big role in mm. shaping the morality and moral values of our young generation. Mm. And I think our parents should spare time for this kind of practice, especially night storytelling that is, before you sleep you that know that is absolutely so true and i agree with you 100 percent my childhood memories yeah um my love for books and mm. stories and everything all you know they started from this bedtime story right. ritual and it was something that the whole day would pass and i would look forward to it that before going to bed it was just it was an unimaginable treat right a, a time of delight right where for a young child to escape everyday life and then fall into that land of imagination right. and then the message always behind it. Right. So we need to come back with that mm -hmm. tradition of bedtime storytelling, bedtime story don't story. we? Yes. Is, is, is that is something, would, would you say that enough parents are taking out the time to do that? No, this is what I'm saying. We mm. are this. Uh, this is uh, our lifestyle has changed so much that we are more keen on giving more uh, quality in term of you know. Uh, We'd rather hand them a gadget. Uh, yes, and by, say you know. Yes. Before you go to bed, we, look, we hey, are thinking hey. of lifestyle, which is only uh, in terms of material, materialistically, we are uh, trying to give good lifestyle to the child, mm. but we are uh, really ignoring, mm. uh, and that's the need of the today, that we should focus on a value of morality and ethics in the lives of our young generation, mm. not only just mm. giving them good lifestyle in the in terms of giving them more money or materialistic, just sending them, materialistically yeah, exactly. sending Techn them to good gadgets. schools and gadget-based, mm. yes, like. Mm. 
they they should not uh, uh, before sleeping they should not turn off their gadget and sleep mm. they should listen they should uh, to their parents mm. and they should learn out of uh, those uh, literary piece of uh, writing uh, small stories Such and it. those uh, poems and those short stories to to develop their pers personality as a good social human being so not true. just as a machine human being. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely true. Okay, now different authors, poets, mm. Mm, novels, narratives, stories, prose, whatever, that have been written that address mm. uh, the complexities of human nature right. and um, have an impact yeah. on morality. Right. Tell us about them. Yeah, uh, here I would like to quote uh, the most famous um, writer Shakespeare and his play uh, Macbeth, which mm. is actually based on morality issues, mm. because the main character Macbeth has to decide between something which is moral and something which is immoral, mm. and his character deteriorated because he's selected to murder Duncan, mm. and then uh, very beautifully um, uh, Shakespeare, uh, you know, uh, gave the difference of uh, morality of a human being and the philosophy of the witches mm. so that we as a human being can understand that we are different from bad mm. evil devils mm. uh, for example uh, when he uh, uh, gave the example uh, when he uh, there was the dialogue of three witches mm. and the philosophy of life of witches were fair is foul and foul is fair so it means for devils, mm. there is no difference between fair and foul. Mm. But if we are human being and if we are good human being, we are supposed to differentiate between what exactly. is right and what is wrong. Yeah. So there is a complete message of uh, message as a philosophy uh, by Shakespeare that as a human being, this should not be our philosophy. Mm. Nowadays, I, I have uh, un unfortunately I have seen many youngsters who say. What is wrong? What is right? You know, it's all the matter of choices. And you know, sometimes sometime wrong is right uh, as a choice. It and seems that everybody has come up with their sort of renewed, renewed yes. concept, concept of morality to suit their purpose. To suit their purpose. So if I want to do something mm -hmm. and you know that you know, this is actually not right, right. but to justify your actions, mm -hmm. you're going to come out with this new uh, philosophy. philosophy. So, so I think if we are, uh, I mean, as a human being, making mm. a mistake is our, you know, nature, and we it's all are born process. because of mistake. Yeah. You know, because of the mistake of Adam, mm. who yeah. mistakenly, you know, eat <laughs> that. So uh, doing mistake is not as wrong as trying to justify it as right and repeating it and repeating it yeah. i mean if we think we are doing uh, we are doing mistake and we try to justify it that this mistake is not mistake it is mm. right mm. And like fair is uh, you know foul and foul mm. is fair mm. so that's the philosophy of a devil mm. that's the philosophy of a uh, which is which is clearly given by shakespeare and many other poets and writers in our society as well that there's uh, the human being has a sense to choose between right and wrong yeah. so human society a uh, human uh, behavior behavior should not be like this, that if we are doing wrong, we should have courage to say, okay, this is wrong, mm. we should not do it again, but don't justify it that your wrong is right because it suits you, as you said. Mm. And then they, uh, uh, they, uh, they then they, uh, again, the uh, witch's dialogue is there uh, about Macbeth that uh, she says, what, can the devil speak truth? Mm. It means speaking a truth is can only be done by the human being and mm. that's a, 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 a trait of a good human being. Mm. Devils don't speak truth. Mm. They cannot speak truth. Mm. So what are we doing? Mm. We are practicing devil's philosophy in our life. Mm. And then uh, you see uh, again uh, someone says about Macbeth that yet do I fear thy nature it is too full of the milk of human kindness mm. you see so this is something which human being is all about mm. and uh, you know uh, this is something that literature tells us that what is human being human mm. being is all full with the milk of kindness we yeah. are human because we are called human being because we are humans human we humanity. have humanity. humanity and if we forget about this very trait mm. then we are just like a social other social animals mm. so there's no difference between mm. us and uh, us an animal or a devil so these social values moral values needs to be inculcated to in today's uh, human being and today's youth uh, right. for uh, for betterment mm. so you know if we think about the environment hmm. that we're providing ourselves and also our, our loved ones. Hmm. Um, in the time of great writers and movements, you had literary circles. Hmm. You had places where uh, people would 
sit and listen to great mm. writers right. talking amongst each other and, mm. and you had a whole environment, you mm. had a whole culture. Yes. So it's so important to establish some sort of that environment, right. whether it's in the home mm. or it's in a public place, yes. but to keep that flame going. Right. I, I think that it's a really, really important part of cultivating mm. the love for literature yeah. and the ongoing quest mm. for refinement of the of the human soul. Yeah. So how do we how do we get back to that as well? Because that's also a very important part. Yeah, again, it's a it's a duty of uh, you know other than parents and teacher, then hearsay is a duty of uh, media also mm. that there should be not only just uh, you know chatty programs where they it's chit chat true. and they do dancing and mm. uh, you can say uh, just singing. Mm. I mean, that is also important. I'm, I don't say that having fun is anything mm. which is wrong, mm. but you know, keeping the balance is the important. Balance. We should also uh, take care of that if, uh, if a child is enjoying. Mm. So child is having enough quality time as well in term of spending time in reading, mm. watching programs which are, uh, which are literary based and mm. they're developing or nurturing the literary side of a child as well. So because true. that gives them wisdom. Mm. Because literature is very much helpful in uh, giving wisdom mm. and uh, a, a good human being in terms of making correct decisions. Because uh, so a, another problem nowadays with our young generation is indecisiveness. Mm. We, we become, we are very choosy, our uh, young generation is very choosy, at the same time they are indecisive. Mm. They don't know what to do, you know, at a particular. So mm. that maturity of personality comes up with a philosophy of life which mm. is actually produced in literature, mm. which is, uh, which is uh, you know, giving every aspect of life, uh, which is discussing every uh, small incidents, like in novels, you, you read different kinds of characters, mm. you meet with a the, with the different picture of the story, mm. right and wrong and something in mm. gray area, there are certain things. And then you learn how to be, you know, uh, how to decide something right, how to be correct and how mm. to be wrong. Mm. And but what are the decisions which are wrong? We should be clear about it. Mm. So the, you know, there's a huge responsibility on the authors as well, isn't authors. it? For them to delve into the yeah. uh, the human psyche and, yeah. and come out with different aspects of it and what a human being is absolutely capable of. Hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, I think, uh, again, there are different, uh, and, and here I think the barrier of language comes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, if there's good piece of literature in English, so everyone, uh, every person in Pakistan, if we say, cannot mm. be, uh, you can say, proficient enough in terms of language to mm. understand th those uh, complex philosophies of life in English. Mm. So as much uh, we produce literature in our native languages, mm. in our indigenous languages even, mm as uh, good will be uh, uh, and easy will be learning and then even connecting ourselves with the literature, society and a human being. Mm. Because then we won't be able, uh, we won't be feeling it like an alien that this is the story of our society mm. where we maybe n never have been, where mm. we don't know how people practice life. Mm. So I think this is, there's a big role of, uh, there can be a big role of indigenous uh, scholars in terms of their uh, literary piece of writing, national scholars, mm. those who write in Urdu, mm. and then obviously local scholars and mm. literary persons who write in English for, mm. for the people who can easily read mm. and understand the perception uh, and perceive uh, English language. And so translations. Translations are very, there is a role of, so mm. I think. Uh, are we a, putting enough time and resources into translations, yeah. which I think, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I think uh, uh, I would uh, hear uh, say the Ac Academy of uh, Letters in uh, Pakistan Academy mm. of Letters is uh, nowadays they are promoting such thing that mm. uh, um, different English books should be translated in local languages and local language literature may be translated in English mm. so so that you know other people can also read mm. uh, people from uh, not from our culture from other culture can read our um, piece of uh, literature so such uh, you know steps need are needed to be taken mm. to promote literature mm. and morality then yes <laughs> exactly okay so what about you know talking about uh, we're talking about storytelling and, and, and uh, folklore and those stories were always you know, passed through generations and the mm. uh, sort of the lure towards them and the magical quality that they had mm. would always be there alive no matter which generation it's passing into. Yeah. The same thing with proverbs. Mm. Uh, you've, 
sort of, if you go into rural areas where people may not have mm. ever opened a book yeah. or read a single word, yeah. but they're so wise. They're so wise. They know the intricacies mm. behind the working of human nature right. and exactly what everything is about. And sometimes they strike you with, your, with their wisdom. Right. And they'll come across with proverbs as well. Because mm. I remember uh, my, uh, you know, my great grandmother, she was not educated, but she used to have these pearls of wisdom. Mm, yeah. And you would just be shocked to think mm. that for someone who has not left the house, mm. has not read a book, mm. has this sort of an insight mm. into the workings of human nature and the right. world around them. Yeah. So, so what yeah, about that? Uh, very right, because proverbs are uh, supposed to be considered as uh, pearls of wisdom. Mm. Because they are, they are, they are, uh, the other uh, word used for proverb is wise sayings. Mm. So they are, they are again a piece of literature. Yeah. Because uh, every language uh, has its own wor mm. proverbs, which, which uh, uh, talks about the morality, the social issues, ethics. Mm. And they are very important that uh, academically proverbs should be included, mm. uh, you know, list of of uh, at least Urdu proverbs, for example, in our course should be uh, uh, included so that our children can, uh, you know, with just one proverb, ca they can learn sum a lesson of wisdom. A yes. whole, and you can oh. sum up a whole, uh, you know, event right. with just one proverb. Yeah. So that they're amazing, I, I yeah. think, and a yeah. great educating tool as well. Right, and they, they inspire as well. Mm. I, I remember uh, uh, outside the wall of my school in mm. my childhood, there was a kind of quotation or you can say a proverb that not failure but low aim is crime. Mm. So I was, I used, I remember that even I was so young that I was not able to understand what does it mean and then I asked my father and he explained me its meaning and since then I decided that okay it doesn't matter even if we fail in struggling and gaining you know our uh, reaching to our targets mm. but we should not go for low aim. Mm. So that always keeps motivating me that mm. our as a human being our potential is so high we should mm. have we should always set high aims mm. in, and then of course in within keeping ourselves in the boundary of uh, moral values that exactly. our goals should not you know cross the limitations of correctness and mm. fairness mm. so we should not go beyond that that we for achieving our goals we go uh, mm. to the wrong side mm. so and I think that that helped me uh, growing as a mm. successful human being mm. as a su successful person because again these uh, small quotes and mm. proverbs can change your life mm. can change your whole it's uh, true. Uh, inspiring it can inspire your whole life yeah. for they can govern your behavior yeah. they can govern the way you uh, conduct yourself yeah. and then you know when we talk about uh, behavior as well and and morals um, it's something that it's something that's going to be that compass mm. for the rest of your life. That at a very young age, if you've acquired uh, these, you know, parameters mm. and these limits and mm. boundaries, and you know mm. that there's no line, there's no blur. Mm. You know, there's nothing to blur that line. Mm. This is the side of the line, and this is that side of the line. Right. We have a lot of blurring of the lines nowadays, yeah. don't we? As yeah. we discussed before, to, yeah. to just suit ourselves yeah. and the situation. So it's all starting at home as well, isn't it? Yeah, because again, parents don't have time uh, for the uh, character building of their children. Mm. So they just leave it to the society. They just leave this, uh, this part of grooming to the maybe school. to the teachers and school. Yeah. And they believe that the teachers and school, I mean, of course, there is a duty of teacher. Mm. But, you know, first thing that you learn as a morality mm. is starts from home. Yeah. So we, we and as, usually and we have to set the mother. Uh, parents have to set yeah. example in front of yeah. uh, their children that this is right and this mm. is wrong. Not but just saying something, but practically doing it so that they they can really you know ins be inspired by their parents mm. that this is something which is wrong in our home, mm. so should be wrong for us also. True. The importance of regional languages mm. in producing literature that right. also can you know 
do with yeah. the moral and ethic value? I think this is uh, very important, especially for people who uh, live in small towns and cities and those who are not very good in reading uh, English. Or, I mean, their understanding is not that good. Uh, they are not uh, taught in English medium schools. Mm. So uh, this uh, local and there are certain, you know, there's a, there's a strong relation of language, culture and thought. Mm. So there are certain uh, philosophies of life mm. which cannot be written in English, mm. which, which oh, yes. have to be written. They in, lose the yes. whole essence. Yeah, because there is a, there is a, if you're writing on certain concepts mm. which are not there maybe in English, mm. those Very concepts true. can only be explained and those philosophies can only be promoted within the uh, local indigenous languages. Mm. So there is a huge uh, uh, you know importance of uh, uh, the regional languages mm. to make them. Uh, local to uh, to to really inspire the uh, indigenous society uh, those values mm. it's important to be written in local languages mm. and in national languages mm. so I think uh, we should promote literature local literature uh, and again by checking the quality that mm. it should not only be written to uh, uh, on sensational basis and just to be famous yeah. but it should, it should have uh, essence, and essence quality. of quality morality right. ethics and beauty of nature and you know blah blah whatever mm. is the other um, beautiful aspects of literature mm. there because it's the, uh, you know uh, inspiring the aesthetic sense of a child is also important because yes. in every child there is a hidden artist oh, true. so that artist uh, should be uh, should got inspired by the piece of literature Absolutely. not only in terms of morality but also in terms of love in terms of beauty in mm. terms of physical beauty mm. natural beauty and mm. uh, every you know aspect is important mm. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Umaima Gamran, thank you so much for being with us here today and um, discussing such an important subject. And I'm sure that uh, the viewers would have really, really enjoyed the conversation and picked up a lot of um, pearls of wisdom here as well. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Okay, so we come to the end of today's program and it's really been an enjoyable one. You know, something that it affects everybody because at the end of the day, you know, it's not just you are what you eat, but it's also you are what you read. So pick up a book and, uh, you know, do get back to book reading. You'll be amazed at what you'll be able to find there. So until next week, bye-bye.